<laughs> Here we go. The new pathway. ETL. Yes. Today, there is a grid on the UC system. It has grades and test scores, minimum requirements. So if you have a 3.1, you need 1,000 on the SAT. If you have a 3.2, you need 900 on the SAT. It's a combo. And if your numbers are above the grid, you are UC eligible. One and three? Yeah. One and three has nothing to do with grades. It's just by tests. So you could have no GPA at all. It was put in for homeschool kids. <laughs> kids who don't go to, 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 uh, to regular high schools. And number three, so you know, is going away. Now, this new part, entitled to review, ETR, is the new pathway that will dramatically increase the size and depth of the applicant pool. And the very first thing they are doing is they are eliminating subject tests. These will no longer be required for UC admission. 2012. This is the people, the, the class of 2012 is the first class impacted. If you're class of 2011, you're sitting here going, I don't know if I love this or hate this, I'm stuck with the old boy. 2012. The class of 2012 will not be required to submit or take SAT2 subject tests to be considered UC eligible. Give me time, okay? Now, why did they do that? Because what they discovered is if they took this requirement away, 22,000 more students became eligible. Because people kept screwing this up, guys. <laughs> they wouldn't take the right tests. Or they wouldn't take math one instead of math two. Or they'd take bio and chemistry, which apparently is from the same subject, and they have to be from different subjects, unless it's Wednesday and you're left-handed, and it's for Kata. So say, get rid of it. This is an artificial thing that we do not need. Now this is where, remember, there are rules, there are reasons, and there are manipulations. That's the rule, I've given you the reason, here's the manipulation. Your kid is an AP calculus, and she's getting an A. What do I know about her in math? She's really good at math, right? And she took the SAT, and she got 770 on math. What do I know about your kid in math? It's really good at math. So in the old days, that kid would then take a math level two exam and get an 800. It told me nothing. I already knew you were good at math. I already know that you never dated in high school. I think all of this together already. <laughs> Thus, the subject tests, they weren't adding any value. Because what was happening was, Kids would take subject tests in things I already knew they were good at. And it was keeping out a bunch of kids who didn't know what tests to take because they were getting lousy advice at school. So here's the manipulation. You're in a class and they wouldn't let you in the AP class. You got stuck in regular US history. But you like US history. You can take a subject test in US history and submit it if it's good, and it benefits your application. You don't have to, you're just allowed to. You had a teacher in Spanish. You hated her, and the feeling was resoundingly mutual. <laughs> you had a C minus, but you're good at Spanish. You can take the subject test. If you get like a 700 on the subject test, the admissions people will look and say, hmm, this kid's got talent. You have a foreign language. You speak Vietnamese or Korean or Chinese. These are gifts that you have. You can take the subject test in foreign language and submit it. And it tells them, I know this language really well. I'm probably an English language learner over here. Consider this. It becomes a benefit to what? Admissibility. 
it makes them more likely to take you. So I told you, rules, reasons, and manipulation. <laughs> Most of the manipulation will be about how the heck do I get in. So the rule is no subject test required. The reasons I've given you, the manipulation is, now you have an extra bullet in the holster that you can use as a makeup, assuming you're good in the subject. Go. The lady's speaking to something I'd said earlier. What are you doing giving me more kids to look at when right now you're saying no to more kids than ever before? Bors began this research in 2005, long before the current crisis. Bors is charged with setting the eligibility requirements for the next two decades, not for the now. It is a far-reaching organization that doesn't care about this. Bors sets UC system standards. Bors does not set any admissions requirements. So for example, would Berkeley be allowed to say, if you want to be an engineer at our school, you must take math level two? Sure. Berkeley can set its own rules. They rarely do. They just set who gets looked at. How big can I make the pool? So that was the first thing they did to make the pool bigger. Here's the second. By the end of your junior year, you must have completed 11 of the 15 A through G subject requirements. I'm not going to bore you with what they are. Everybody knows. OK? Number three. And number four. If by the end of your junior year you have completed 11 of the 15 A through G requirements and you have at least a 3.0 weighted GPA in those requirements and you took the SAT, doesn't matter what you got, you can get the same score as a snowmobile. <laughs> If you have done those three things, you are now entitled to review. Imagine what that will do to the size of the applicant pool. A ton more people. Now, I can play. Really? 3-0? Took the test and now what I got? I can play. That is a resounding statement to eligibility. We want more kids swimming in our pool. We've got to have more kids. Does it mean I am more likely to take you? No, that's an admissibility function. I'm going to take the best quarterback I can find. I don't want a lousy football team. I'm going to take the best academics I can find. I don't want a lousy science department. I'm going to take kids with high test scores because it helps my rankings. All of the admissibility stuff, if anything, gets harder, right? But I'm going to say to more kids, I'm going to consider you. Because my mandate is I have to consider the top 12 and a half percent. I don't have to take them. I have to consider them. Am I making sense? Because everyone in here is going, what does this mean for my kid? You know what it means? What it's always meant. Take hard classes. Go. <laughs> Get good grades, stunner. Sun rises in the east, obvious. Get good test scores, sun rise. Like nothing's changed there. But more kids will have the welcome mat thrown out for them that says, we want you to know that you can be considered. 